Hey, what's going on, everybody? Japing here, checking in, respectmyregion.com. We're back again with another episode of RMR TV. Today, we've got another Seattle Spotlight edition featuring one of my favorite humans in the Seattle music culture, Marshall Hugh from Marshall Law Band, will be joining us today. We're going to be bringing on the Marshall Law Band uh, frontman here in a moment. So let me go ahead and get the invite locked in. I appreciate you all for joining us today. Let me go ahead and get Regions RMR Legacy Smalls available in California and Washington State. Please pick up some premium indoor cannabis. Marshall, what's what, good, bro? What's popping, me brethren? How are you? My dude. How are you living? Man, everything's good, bro. I, can't, I cannot complain. When it's sunny in Seattle, it's like, bro, what do you really have to complain about? You feel me? Look, looking good, feeling good, and sunny in Seattle. That sounds like a good day. It's just winds all around, bro. How are you? I love it, dude. I'm good. I'm, I'm smoking good, feeling good, and it's nice outside in Cali. It's not too hot where I'm at, so I'll take it. Uh, yeah, I always forget you're out there in Cali. What part are you in? I live in Los Angeles. I'm in a city called Tarzana. It's near Woodland Hills, if you're familiar. Okay. Yeah, I go down there um, a lot of times, like a couple times a year, and uh, I stay in Echo Park. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm familiar with that area. That's a cool little, like, uh, definitely an old school part of L.A. that has some good history to it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's my spot. It's got an arcade bar, you know, pinball bar, like out of ball. So that's really all I need around. I love that, bro. Good beer, good weed, and some games. Yeah, Give me all the games. I love it, dude. I, I love it. Well, man, uh, I appreciate you being our guest today. This is our weekly show that we have here on the RMR Instagram. Uh, for those of you guys that are watching, I appreciate y'all for joining it. This is the RMR TV interview series. Um, this week's guest, Marshall Hugh, Marshall Law Band, Summer Music Series. Series Fremont Friday two two years right this is year two year three. Uh, the first year was like kind of experimental so this is like year like two and a half two like, and a half yeah yeah last year yeah. was like we got a banner printed up the first year was like we just pulled the jelly bean our mobile stage we just pulled yeah. it up started playing music and then mediums came with some vendors and it kind of was just like ragtag but yeah and then it's it like became, our second became an official thing after that for sure exactly once yeah. that Times article yeah. hit then it was we were up. Love it. I love it, man. It's been it's been a it's been fun to be a part of the the story. It's been fun to tell your story. And now Taylor, I haven't been there in a few years. Taylor tells me nothing but great things about that entire series. And so I appreciate all the hard work that you do to continue bringing attention, giving people a platform uh, for the artists out there. Hey, man, it, it, you know, y'all been doing it for for years and decades almost. I don't know, have you hit the decade yet? We are, we're at, uh, we're at 12. Hey, come on, we working on two over here. So, yeah. you know, y'all laid the blueprint, y'all laid the foundation. And, um, you know, a lot of people talk about the lack of infrastructure, lack of platforms, lack of opportunities. And, uh, you know, it's like, you can talk about it, but, you know, why don't you do something about it? And, you know, Fremont Fridays and the gala are really, our contributions to the Pacific Northwest scene to try to, uh, you know, be about the things that we want to see become. It's like, like you know, they, they say, I'm not a musician. So let's just leave, leave with that context. So I'm not trying to get booked for shows. So I'm not reaching out to that. We used to do events and shows, but now we're not doing that anymore, right? Where uh, I live in LA. So you got to think like as an artist, how many opportunities are there for rock bands, for hip hop groups, for just rappers, right? For an EDM DJ, right? How many, how many different shows are there really? There's, there's not a lot at the end of the day for each of those. It's very singular. They don't cross over a lot. And so for you to provide another avenue with, uh, with, with the team that you have, I just wanted to, to show my love and, and give respect and pay respect to that. Can you, before we dive in and talk a little bit about your, your history and, and martial law band, can we just show love to the team that puts on this whole event and tell us a little bit about what this, this event is and who it stands for and the people involved? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it starts uh, kind of with the martial law band and um, my drummer, Matt, the hospitality, sax player, metal Marty, uh, guitar player, shred God, 
uh, keys player, Mercy Lewis, and um, our bass player, Big Pink. So, like, you know, I always come up with these, like, cockamamie schemes, and the bros are, you know, after a couple of row sessions, they're usually down. And so that's how this started. That's how the stage came about, the SS Jelly Bean. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we have our manager, Mir Kraft, who, uh, you know, helps corral all of our energies. And then, you know, you team up with uh, the Mediums boys, the two brothers over there, Roger and C's, who uh, get the vendor and the market, the La Plaza, uh, popping. And then uh, LTD, which uh, is owned by a guy named Jack, who's just been absolutely, uh, in my opinion, pivotal uh, for the hip hop scene and for the live music scene over the last three years, you know, really one of those, uh, he was a bar owner that became a venue owner uh, after, you know, Fremont Fridays that's gone out of his way to, you know, at the end of the day, you're a bar owner, you're, you're assuming that liability and you're trusting that the people that you work with are going to bring a clientele that's gonna respect the fact that, you know, they're in somebody else's house, so to speak. So, you mm -hmm, know, the, mm -hmm. the three there are like um, the, the three headed monster that make it all happen as far as you know providing the space coordinating the vendors and uh you know getting the music you know we pull up our jelly bean we use that as the stage we bring our sound system our guitar player shred god he and mercy lewis they run the board and the sound um and then you know we've we've been really blessed to have some other amazing partners like um uh, the ghetto food network and uh think twice think twice is a foundation that does a uh, mobile like single use breathalyzers okay. and you know it's really cool because they've uh in conjunction with myself and the team uh we started something called the fremont block benefit so uh we have like 20 different businesses i just got the sidekick and the dumpling place down there on board that if you have one of these wristbands they'll give you a discount uh for supporting the block and supporting the community throughout the entirety of the summer not just on friday that's so huge. you know that that's yeah that's the unit and the dream is you know two years, three years, next year, five years down the road is to be able to block off the road and to have kind of like an Austin, like sixth street uh, type of feel to where the whole neighborhood is popping. And, uh, you know, 20 different businesses have been uh, amazing enough to see that vision, buy into that vision early. And now we got something that multiple people, uh, hundreds of people get to touch the stage, hundreds of people get a vend, and you know it affects thousands of people and you know the, the Seattle community. So we're we're blessed to have Fremont Friday going. We got a lot of other ideas going for it: multiple stages, multiple venues, uh, you know, karaoke, whatever. You run the gambit. But um, I, it, I'm it, with it all. Bro. You know, I'm with all of it, man. Like we we applaud your effort because we know how hard it is to throw events. It's not you know it, it's easy to throw something together. It's hard to execute something dope and to do that consistency. Right. And that 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 consistency is the crucial element. Most people don't understand that these kinds of things oftentimes aren't generating revenue. It is for the love. It is just to build and grow for this long term vision. And so uh, we very much applaud you for that. You know, with us, we we don't do the Seattle World Tour by ourselves. We work with a full multi person unit band, a full you know series of partners and so what you're doing is so huge and we're here to support you and be a part of that however you see us infusing alongside you now um big, big shout out to the entire squad and the team uh, for 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 giving this platform and for coming together to do this uh it's been fun to watch i haven't been there i haven't been back in three years it's been a while but we need, I can tell need you, you up there's... here joey stop ducking the pink dub you know we got love for you up here bro Come on, man. I know, bro. And we're, we're working on it, man. We're building this empire over here. You know, we we got the weed shit now. Someone's got to run the shit. Um, but in terms of this event, Marshall, what, what do you, you know, there, it sounds like there's there's a lot to really enjoy about this. When you're there and someone pulls up on you, the journalist, the mom, the parent, the random person at the dumpling spot walking outside, they see you guys going ham, they see your bright, colorful hair. What are you, when they ask you that, like, you know, what's going on? What is your favorite part about this? Why should I come? Like, what, what is that? What, what does that answer to you? Yeah, in short, you know, just community. Like, it's really a place where anyone could show up with no friends and 
get it one come in for free and like you mentioned this is a labor of love you know we'd love if uh somebody came in with a fifty thousand dollar check to make this happen but you know there's a lot of people that are just like you know doing it for the love and and we kept it free intentionally because we don't want there to be any barriers as far as accessibility so it's yeah. something where it's like you know somebody has ten dollars in their pocket or ten dollars to their name they can still come meet people if they're artists network and you know support you don't have to support monetarily always jump on your phone tell a friend about it bring some other people through yeah and so you know, it's just having like a, a legitimate community every time i go down there um you know it's the, the consistent players you see but it's the people that cycle through or some of my friends you know like you know being in the entertainment industry like yo i miss weddings i miss birthday parties i miss family engagements i miss so many things that a regular person can prioritize on their schedule because if i got a show that's what i have to do this is my livelihood and this is my dream and my passion so it creates like this landing place for my friends that come in and out of town like come friday come summer you know where i'm finna be and you know that you're gonna pull up you can play beer pong you can play cornhole you can support local vendors you can listen to music or Shit, you know, Fremont, Fremont's cannabis friendly too. They ain't even weed sponsors there, but there's a dispensary up and down the block. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Shout That's, out to Ruckus. They're they're part of the uh, uh, they're part of uh, Ruckus Ruckus Recreational. Yeah, they're right yeah, across the street, Ruckus. and uh, they offer ten to twenty percent depending on the strand you get if you have one of these. Nice. There we go. So, you guys been doing this event for a few years now there's obviously there's performers there's brands involved there's there's a curation element talk to me a little bit about how you put together the super dope lineup of artists for the summer yeah so uh we tried a couple of varying tactics and you know uh we tried like a submission process but then we got like over 700 applications and that was dope um and we still kind of accept those but this year uh you know kind of like staffing wise and to, to pay somebody to do what i really need them to do the way i need them to do it that's like legitimately probably like a, up, upwards of a twenty thousand dollar position for that <laughs> summer you know what i mean i need them coordinating with everybody i need them showing up on time i need them there from noon to 2 a.m and i just took that task on uh this year and uh i really went through my head my contact list and i said like who are the people that i know that are in my phone book that are constantly engaging with me constantly around people i see people that i admire and i made a list of about 100 and then i just went knocking on the door and then um to create you know some more accessibility for someone who just maybe hasn't crossed paths with me or doesn't know how to like get into that uh kind of circle we did this thing called the pre-funk so at medium shop we did an open call and an open tryout for anybody to pull up and uh over 40 people pulled out everybody got a chance to rock at least a song and from those 40 we selected eight people to add to the lineup um and that was really cool to see that was the community see. zone you know damn and, that means uh, even I had a chance if I pulled up. Damn. Real talk. And we weren't just, I think this is like a very important like uh, point for artists to understand and everybody <laughs> to understand. It's like at some point, everybody's dope. Like I didn't put anybody on the lineup that I was like, oh, they're weak, but they're hella cool. You know what I mean? Like yeah. from my perspective, I enjoy what they do, the energy they bring. So to be, to differentiate themselves, you know, you have to look at what type of value are these people bringing to an event that you are paying them to perform at. So, yeah. you know, I'm looking at who's promoting before, who's staying the whole time, who's good energy, who's at the front row, you know, who's uh, promoting afterwards, who's showing up to Fremont Friday. Who can you, who can you count on? Who can I really, really, you know, and you know, that's another thing people ask like, yo, how can I get on? How can I, I'm like, yo, I'm there at noon, lifting up tables, setting up speakers. Like if you want to get in with the squad, I bet you that if you showed up three weeks in a row, just like I'm doing, and <laughs> helped me carry the speaker and put up these banners and help me run the front door, I bet imagine you'll if find you. Imagine if to be an opener, you had to work. You feel me? To be, <laughs> you know, and, be a performer, you had to work. Come set up. Help me. That, 
come run that booth before your before your performance, bro. Come exactly. come check people in. That's what it, man. That's I, it, music world is crazy, bro. Music world is crazy. Now, I love I love to hear that you guys are are. It's the, it's a lot. Like, they don't know I'm talking to Joey, boy. I, ain't nothing more important than they, this. I'm on. They didn't get. The, they didn't get the. They didn't get the memo. Let me send them an invite. Yeah, okay, come on. Time. They no, tripping, man. Go. Come on, buddy. They had to call me now, twice. <laughs> you, 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 you gave us a little insider scoop into into the bandmates. Now, before we dive into you, can you again? Can you show love to the to the squad? Who's in Martial Law Band? Why is it called Martial Law? Yeah, word. So, um, I'll start with just like uh, identifying the members, and then I'll get into like a little bit of like a backstory of how it, and that'll explain where the name came from. Bang bang. Um, bang. so. I mean, I'm, I'm just glad, bro. Like, real talk. I have musicians that are not only talented, but are also really willing to put in the work alongside with me. And, um, you know, that really, the engine really starts with uh, Matt, uh, aka The Hospitality. I know you're familiar with him from being in the cannabis industry. And, I mean, it's just rare that you meet somebody, uh, in my perspective, that can match your energy, match your hustle match your commitment, match your dollars, and, you know, put his efforts 360 all encompassing into the project as if his, it was the Matt Law Band. So, you know, he's the, he's the one who really uh, drives us all and, and makes a lot, a lot of things happen behind the scenes. And uh, I'm just so appreciative for him. And then, uh, you know, Mercy Lewis, he's like, of course, he's great at the keys. Of course, he's good at arranging and helping uh, get practice going, but he's also running the website. He's running merch, yeah. you know, yeah. and then uh, band Josh, still, a band is just a hobby. You know, it's just a group of guys playing music unless they're taking it serious and doing all the things. Yeah, yeah exactly. And so like uh, Josh, AKA uh, shred God, AKA Jabber beats is his production. <laughs> he, uh, uh, he, he does a lot of like our audio work. He's a mixer himself. So, you know, it's like, he gets paid a ton to do it for other people. But, you know, for us, it's like, hey, I, I, I see we got this much in the band fund. Like, can I get like 100 or something this week? You know what I mean? And um, it's just beautiful. And then uh, Metal Marty, who's on uh, saxophone, he's just like the most like reliable, consistent person you'll ever meet. Great hearted person. Uh, been sober for, I believe, coming up on three or four years. Um, and just really adds that like, consistency and calming element to it all and then evan um he's just like a musical genius he's over here working on um hey shout out my boy danny cosmos i seen your mom yesterday out here in the creek boy hey much love bro um but uh uh you know big pink will do a lot of the arranging and he'll chart out the music so it, it took a while to like not make like you know big pink he's not the best at promoting and instead of me like shaking him every single day to post on instagram it's like bro just give me your password i'll post when a show's coming that's cool just make sure these songs are charted out and make sure we're prepared for our pre-game huddle to go through all these transitions yeah. and whatnot yeah. you know so everyone's uh, the got team's to, rules everyone's got to play their role bro if it's easier for someone to to bust their you know i know you got a little bit of a hooper background so it's like if someone is struggling to do certain things it's you know just pick up a little bit of the weight if it's easier and let them yeah. pick up the weight somewhere else exactly and i think like not trying to like force something that doesn't fit into like a square <laughs> like figure out what is that person's square and apply it and then you know team wise uh you know as a i think the last year and a half maybe coming up on two years we've had mira um uh, you know helping us with emails uh conducting uh, uh meetings you know we meet on zoom twice a week and then we meet to rehearse twice a week and then we throw fremont fridays and then we probably have a show on saturday or maybe a show on thursday too so it's kind of one of those things you know it's like you really got to be a team you really got to be a family and, and we we connect about five to six times a week throughout the entirety of the summer and you know twice at least a week throughout the entirety of the year so it's just a it's a it's an all-out it's an enterprise you know and then we got to play music it's a it's 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 a commitment to the craft the hustle the, you got to be passionate and shout out to you for having all those good people around you man big shout out to the squad for real um, man. Couldn't do it without them so the 
last the last project you guys have this event series going on let's go back to the last project you guys released uh let the people know a little bit about that last project yeah man it's called what that your one favorite pro you know what, what are people looking for all that good stuff. totally totally so we got a new one coming out here pretty soon um you know we're we're, we're constantly scouring the internet and finding the the smartest release strategy and this this and that but you know we'll have some singles coming out uh within the next month or so um but if you take it back to our last like full body project that we dropped it was called 12th and pine and anybody who's like uh familiar with seattle um it knows like the history behind 12th and pine that's where the chop zone was and um that album was such an emotional journey and was such an emotional deposit that it is something that will always be sentimental to me it'll also always be triggering to me and it really is like my heart and our musical souls like ripped open for display on a specific topic and journey which was centered around the uh black lives matter protests here in seattle yeah so uh those who maybe aren't familiar with our story or um familiar with that specific story here in seattle we did 49 about, other states have no idea what really happened you know what i mean like it's, nobody has really any clue they just saw what was on the news yes yeah, so um you know probably like uh the third day of you know the whole world beginning to protest after george floyd was murdered it um was something where i you know especially me as like a black person i'm going out to these protests i'm trying to fit figure out like where I really fit in and like, how can I really contribute, but also like contribute for a long period of time. So like the first two days I go out there, you know, I'm like yelling, I'm chanting with the people and I'm going home, like honestly just feeling like dejected and like tired and exhausted. Like, I don't think I can keep up this style of protest. There are some people that are really uh, built for that. And trust me, I've seen a couple of those people out there. Like, if you need them, they're out there. And those are the people that have the the makeup to consistently protest in the traditional sense. Uh, for me, I saw it. I went out there with Matt. I went out there with Marty. I went out there with my bandmates. And um, I started noticing that there was kind of an infrastructure that was starting to build around the protest. So we're talking about, like, mutual aid staff. We're talking about uh, the bike brigades. We're talking about the people that make sure people are fed. And then you got uh, uh, medics, you got security. And it starts to form like this little, um, like almost like how a festival has these different tents and whatnot. My boy Rick Ray, it was popping, brethren. Um, and so we, we said, okay, how can we really contribute here in a way that we know we can do day in and day out and be something reliable for people to gravitate towards and how can we use our platform to create a wider story and and get more eyes on it for people that aren't necessarily comfortable with the bullhorn or comfortable directly on the lines clashing with police and uh you know we came to the conclusion like yo uh we, of course over there it's like this is right next to um uh apex theater and julie mm -hmm. C. collective over there uh really dope mc really dope creative uh and, and community activists and uh you know she she kind of just gave us the green light like yo y'all should set up your music right there that way people have like a recharge station that way people you can do what it is that you do and is actually your talent and your skill and something you're able to do day after day and at this point i had hidden like 20 day tours before where i performed pretty much every day. So I know like, if I had to do it, I could really do it. And this felt like the time like, oh, it's, it's time to do it. So um, the first day we were really just on the streets, we like got power from like the annex and like taped down an extension cord and the people responded to it so greatly had so many like powerful conversations and also like opened up the stage. That's another thing a lot of people didn't necessarily see or understand. It's like, <clears throat> we might be playing some music but then we'd stop and give the stage to somebody to come up and share, you know, what they were going through through that emotional time and their beliefs on the on the way, which is a lot yeah. different than doing it in the midst of a protest with the bullhorn. And so we uh, ultimately were out there like seven straight days and um, 
man, it it was. A, I can get deeper into that. You know what I mean? If that's what you want me to do, but no, tell people was, to for for somebody that wasn't there. You know, as I mentioned, it, the only thing that pe most people see around the country is what was on the news. Obviously, what's on social media, what's being streamed. Most of that is a singular focus. It doesn't really share um, a, a multi variety perspective, or, you know, especially from a music one. You know, I think that that was a very smart way to, to get, as you said, you know, just figure out a way to play your role and have the impact that you wanted to have and all that. Um, yeah. And we used that experience to, we, you know, to get back to the 12th and Pine. We got out there like, man, we can't do this forever. We need to take these experiences. We need to encapsulate them in a record. So we went to Whidbey Island, wrote the record in five days, came back, went directly to the studio uh, with Jack and Dino, who was the producer for like Mud Honey, early Sob Pop stuff, early Nirvana stuff. Went right into the studio with him, five days, recorded it all, got all the features. Nobi's on it, Shamel's on it, Jamo the Bird's on it, Alex Dugdale's on it um I'm, uh, uh dan gregory's on it and fairy godmother's on it and yeah we cranked out that album mixed it in five days uh and then dropped it a month later and that was just it was just a roller coaster of a time and, and a, a ton of uh by the end of it i was just so emotionally and physically drained and um yeah it was a, a concept album through and through a lived concept album yeah super interesting for those of you that haven't heard that yet, make sure you guys go check that out, 12th and Pine. I know Taylor was a huge fan, and again, having uh, it, I was here in L.A. for a Los Angeles version of some of those things. Um, definitely something that, at home, pretty interesting to watch from afar. Uh, appreciate you being out there and, and, as you said, providing a space for people to be safe, recharge, um, and enjoy the culture, the community, be a part of that. Um, this yes. next this next section is about um, it's about getting to know you. You're my guest today. I appreciate you. I hope to see you the next time you're in LA. And by then, I hope to be hooping again soon too. Yes, um, sir. I'll be I'll be in the gym. That's where I'm going after this. So that way, I don't <laughs> break. So that way, I don't break my shit the next time I start hooping. Yeah, uh, hey, it's catching up to us. You've been at it for you know. I'm, get, it's I'm, getting, plus, I'm, be, I'm getting old, bro. I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so these are just like questions. Just the first thing that really comes to mind: one, one, one word, two words, or one sentence, whatever. There's not try not to go too crazy deep unless you really need to. I got um, you. So it's kind of like hot takes. Uh, first one: what song or artist was absolutely instrumental into getting you into the music stuff that you do? Uh, George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic. Okay, that's a different one from all the other answers, and I love <laughs> it. But not so different though with the funky stuff. That's definitely been um, one of my last one of my last guests. Uh, big and really inspired by some of the old funk music that's out there. Um, would you say that, that your music experience comes from any one like, like your love for music, the desire to create? Does that come from someone in your family, or does, again, is that coming from someone else? Uh, uh, I'd say it comes from my family in general. Uh, my pops introduced me to a lot of this music. My mom introduced me to like kind of the white side of stuff, the Eagles, and uh, actually she bought me my first uh, hip hop CD, Ludacris is Chicken and Beer. And there then my, my sisters are just super um, high achievers, academic, and they really laid like a foundation for me. Like anything I did, like I couldn't come on no bunny stuff. It's just unacceptable in the family. I'm with that. I hear you there. That's, that's funny too. <laughs> um, would you say that your like your history with sports and that family element does all that stuff play a role into how you approach music and how you lead the how you lead the team how you lead the execution of the events and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I'm a point guard and I'm a basketball coach. So the the, the band they they my nickname is literally Coach. That's funny. That's that I, I can I can relate to that. I feel you. What is uh if you get in the car and you're not gonna bump your own stuff? What is what are you listening to generally? Hmm. I can't even lie. I just got my license and I listen to sports radio, doc. I don't know what's wrong with me, bro. <laughs> you're, you're, sick, you're sick early at 40, 45 plus already. I'm a sicko, bro. I don't know. I mean, listen to Softy, Dick Fade. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> what is wrong with me? That's funny. I'm not mad at it. I grew up listening to that shit growing up with my dad. So I feel you. Yeah. That's funny. That, <laughs> one's, that one's funny. 
uh, is there a top uh, like rapper or band or artist besides sports radio that's <laughs> on for you, uh, in your life? Yeah, right now, um, I got a wide variety of stuff. So I've been listening to a lot of like Dave Matthews band, a lot of live albums. Um, but I've been, I just got like, I had already heard of them, but now I'm like diving deeper into like uh, Drakeo, uh, Remble, Stink Team, Ralphie, all yeah. them. I just, I just love how they're like whispering and talking that talk on the track. You feel me? So. I'm, I'm There's some interesting to... styles and cadences out there right now. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really enjoying that, diving deep into that. I'll be on all the, I'll be watching the No Jumpers, the Milk 74s, fours, the, you know what I'm saying, the Fig Munities and stuff. I, it's it's kind of like my reality TV. Love it. I love it. Um, speaking in line with like the rapper music related things, uh, do you have, and I'm a, there's a little sports crossover here. Do you have a starting five? like rappers today you named a couple right there that you listen to but who's your starting five of like who's kind of like relevant today right now? Who, who's on, who's on my playlist type vibes today yeah, yeah. uh drakeo's on there big time um i'd say Rembo is on, on there uh i'm gonna always go and revisit the old Wiz mixtapes the old little wayne mixtapes um yeah. and then there's a uh, a Seattle artist, actually, uh, it's like Emmy or EMI. Like she's been around since like 2016, and yeah, uh, her music stuff. Oh, dog, I love riding to it. That's sick. That's sick. That's a, an interesting one. Um, with the passion for athletes, for sports in general, do you have like a favorite five athletes that? You really like well it could be any sport i'll let you do basketball if you want to yeah yeah uh i mean gary payton's my favorite player of all time like just the way okay. he talked trash the way he represented the city like that was beautiful just completely beautiful let's do let's do favorite seattle athletes all time let's i got you yeah. i got you he says pronounce drake with the man i don't know about that I just seen an interview he said it's with well maybe he said the interview it is just draco yeah i think you're right you might be right, bro. He'd be mad. R.I.P. My guy. He was saying on that No Jumper interview I just watched. Um, okay. <laughs> GP, for sure. Slick Watts, because his son, Donald Watts, trained me. Um, I got to go with Ichiro. I just love, like, the silent professionalism of which he uh, represented the city. Uh, ooh. And then my <laughs> last. My he last. Pull that sleeve up. Real that shit was real. Oh, it, and I was even a baseball player. I was out there uh, hitting the wiffle ball. We all ball. did it. We all did it. Pink? We all did you it. You know? Um, and then my last two, <laughs> I got to give it to um, Brianna Stewart and Sue Bird. And um, that's because uh, Championships. actually. Championships. Yeah, that. And I was a practice player for uh, the Storm for a summer. And, um, man, I went through it. Them girls hooped me. That's sick. That's sick. That's some of the cool. That that right there is obviously probably not many people know that, but that is super fucking cool. That's a little. That's a little exclusive. I feel like. Yeah. Um, but I ref. I ref college basketball some scrimmages when I was a central because uh, refing was my bat was one of my passions and and a, and a like a side job, and it was super cool just to ref that quality of basketball. When you get to ref, just for people that don't understand basketball at the highest level, there's a difference between someone who can hoop casually and is good there's a difference between someone who can do that and then play actual structured with a game with refs with fouls and doing that and then there's levels to that which is like aau and select and maybe your school and then maybe your high school can suck or your aaus can suck like i remember in mercer island i a hundred percent and this is no lie i have ref basketball games where mercer island teams have gotten their fucking asses handed to them by 80 or 90 points. Yeah, I watched the, those Mercer Island kids suck so bad at basketball historically. Uh, uh, hold it's on, hold so, on. Ed, Ed, so Peppel, Ed Peppel used to coach out there during the 90s. I didn't get a chance to see him, but I think they got back-to-back. <laughs> well, I'm talking just the rec leagues, the AAU, oh, okay. teams, whatever. whatever they, were, they were When I was refing, it was never good. But anyways, I didn't want the, level the Mercer Island goons to come for you. 
They can come with me all they want, bro. <laughs> I come from Renton and Ken. We're good where we're at. Like, <laughs> like the, the there's levels to this, and so I believe you went to a school on the east side, yeah. And uh, O'Day. Oh, O'Day. Okay, so Seattle. So yeah. see, I always got it. It was O'Day, and then there's East Side Catholic, right? That's the other private one out there. Yeah. They, so I, 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 I used they're they're solid at football, right? Yeah. And no, O'Day they got is solid football. at football and basketball, right? Yeah. Yeah, O'Day's like, you know, historically our house. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, when you were there and you were, you know, going to that school, going to the upbringing there in Seattle, like how does that translate to the music shit that you do now? Like is what do you when it comes to like the grind, the work ethic, like you clearly you're still coaching, you know, now you're leading multiple entities between the event and the band, like how does that translate? Yeah, I'd say, like, number one, like, O'Day, like, it, it's all, all boys' school, and they're all athletes, so, like, you better get tough quick, you feel me, verbally and physically, like, seniors aren't going to spare a freshman, you know what I mean, and, and that just, like, being in that environment over and over and day after day, week after week, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. it just hardens you to where you're not looking at people uh people aren't able to intimidate you you yeah. know and you realize yeah. there are many different styles of earning and garnering and demanding uh respect and so i'd say you know o'day really established that uh i always, you know, I always play sports i was always good at it and so you know i'm like oh like, i'm gonna make you respect me that way but this off the court off the field and the discipline that comes with it that's just uh that's just how it goes I feel you on that one. Now, yeah, Rick Ray, we talk a little bit. You wouldn't be able to survive, brother. You wouldn't be able to survive. No <laughs> they like you. They try to tell you holy names. That's like our sister school. It's like, oh, when you go on your visit, they're like, oh, yeah, it's right up the street. There's always girls in the parking lot. Now you get there, there are no girls, and it's up like 11 blocks up a big ass hill. It's like, come on, bro. You sold me a pipe dream. Oh, my God. That's not the same. Now, earlier we were talking a little bit about the various Seattle artists and how you reached out to your network and really curated the, the lineup for the events for the summer. Um, in terms of like, you, and you mentioned Emmy on this earlier to this point, but what Seattle artists do you actually rock with or support musically? Not just like you like them as they're like, they're good people, you're good people. There's a lot of yeah. nice people out there, but like, who shit do you think actually slaps? And that can be any kind of slap. Yeah. She can just go hard you know what i'm saying word 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 i mean it's like i have a really wide variety and i'm not really like very very rarely am i just like clicking on some hip-hop just to listen to it you feel me to be honest um the people that i really like in that like vein that's like you know this is undeniably super hard it's like like gifted gab i am chamel i really like og mambo's music um, and then, you know, it kind of gets into other, uh, I could go down the gambit of people that have like songs. Hit, that hit like, me. Yeah. Um, bro, I, I ain't been there. Hit I'm, me with some stuff. I'm like there. I'm interested in your culture. Man. Yeah. Hit me with what you yeah. Got. I like, uh, there's a, a, a group called the Black Tones. They're okay. super fire. Um, and fronted by Eva Walker, who's a KXP, uh, DJ over here. Uh, King Young Blood is super fire. There's a guy named Torn Frost in the Patterns of Saturn. Best freestylist I've ever seen. They'll play like three hour sets and he'll literally just have choruses and he don't even have verses written and he'll bar out the entirety, like the That's entirety crazy. of the time. Uh, Nobi is just crazy fire. Uh, let's see, Oblay Reed is amazing young cat that's on the absolute ascent. Another Northside kid. Uh, let's see other bands. I really like La Fonda. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the, my, some of my favorite bands that I got to headline this uh, year, uh, Ray Posado. They're like more like Latin funk fusion, seven piece, eight piece. Uh, there's a band called Citrus. That's like a nine piece band that just is super and in, like intricate and kind of jam as well. Uh, let's see. I really, really like um, Scarlet Park. I think Scarlet Park has like a beautiful generational voice and, and her music matches that and it translates. Um, shoot, let me There's think. some hitters. There's some hitters on that list right there. Yeah, come I recognize on. Some of them, I recognize some of them, but it's over half of them I ain't never heard of. So that's awesome. I'm, I can't wait to start looking some of them up. 
Yeah, man. T tap in, bro. And uh, you Taylor know, always has our, our back on that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Taylor knows. Seattle, like. Taylor knows. She knows man. what's going on. And I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm liking people from out of the city too. Uh, there's a guy named Coaster from like uh, Salem or something like that. Bro goes dummy hard, you know. And oh, Yakima and Sela. Yep, yep, exactly. You know, of course, you got uh, he goes by Jang Nagoon now, but formerly known as Django. Uh, you know, out of Spokane, TS the Solution out of there. Um, and then you know, uh, Western Washington. Oh, this is a big one. Uh, there's a guy named uh, the Rhetorician, and this band's called the Rhetorician and the Duper Humans. And what I love about him, uh, oh, and my boy Dank Zilla, too, I think he's in here, you know. Uh, but Rhetorician, he has created this whole universe around his project so he has these uh videos on youtube called the descendant of zach taylor and it's up to episode mm -hmm. three now and it's just cinematic it's just dope and it's just different and hold on i gotta tell you my favorite artist in the city is jmo the bird man he just jumped on here stop playing with the man he got the smoothest most powerful voice i've ever been around and you yeah. know he comes and sings with the band a lot of times and then he won't be able to do a gig and then all have to do is parts. And because of that, you know, it's really transformed my vocal ability and what I thought was possible, um, you know, having to sing songs like Get Better. So, uh, yeah, my favorite artist out of Seattle is J-Mo the Bird, man. Come on. We shout out to J-Mo the Bird, man, sliding through. Appreciate you supporting the homies here. Uh, for those of you that have ever joined us, man, we got Marshall Hugh in the building from Marshall Law Band. This is another episode of RMR TV, our Seattle Spotlight interview series. This episode was brought to you guys by, come on, man, we got that Respect My Region cannabis in the building. That's good. Washington. I don't smoke too come much on, anymore, man. bro, but I'm, I'm going to have to smoke with you, man. Washington and California, it's available. Cop it. It's soon to be Arizona and some other states is what we're working on. it. That's why I'm here. That's why I haven't been back in Seattle is because your boy's been active here trying to build our brands. We, we want to be able to make money on the weed shit so we can do these interviews in studios yeah. so we can make content at a high level with the team, with the editors, with the writers. Uh, it's been a lot of uh, patchwork to get us this far, but we're here, we're still doing it. I'm excited to have you tonight, I appreciate you. I've got four uh, things left. Um, I haven't been there in Seattle. Where, where's the fire eats at? What's your top food? What's the restaurants? Where's the best teriyaki, best chicken? What you got? Ooh, I mean, I got you, okay. So, hit me with some slaps, cause not, you gotta, you gotta bait me to come back. I got so. you. You. Okay, breakfast wise, you're gonna want to go to the Seattle Biscuit Company. Okay, it's super fire, like crazy biscuits, crazy like plating. It's just different. Um, then okay. best teriyaki is right next to O'Day. It's called Yoshino's Teriyaki up yeah, on Cafe. Absolutely yeah, yeah. bangs. Um, if you're out in Tacoma, uh, it's I think it's called it's vegan food. It's called Easy Easy Mart, something like that. It's so fire, all vegan, southern comfort food. Another Seattle artist, uh, Sean the Shaman, uh, took me there and put me on. And every time I roll through Tacoma, I'm there. Uh, you know, Shout you got to You feel me? You got to hit a classic Seattle dog. Like, they bang. I go to Al's Gourmet Sausage uh, right there in that alley over by the stadiums. Um, if it's some, like, late night eats, I like this uh, dumpling czar over here in Fremont. You know, that's my go-to slide through to that. Uh, I, I very rarely eat like red meat, mostly just fish and veggie. But um, if I do have a burger, Dick's is still slapping, man. I think like it's compared still to the slap. Out, I just think it slaps, bro. Um, and then, oh, uh, Jackson's Catfish Corner. They always step up uh, and okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the gala for us and get us some food and whatnot. So um Shout yeah those, catfish corner yeah those those are my hitters right there um i'm trying to think if there's any like other go-to spots that i'm like oh ohana sushi uh down there in belltown well you just you just named so many different places that you took out my whole next series of different <laughs> oh. food category questions so <laughs> Dang, we're gonna skip bad, ahead bro. to this no you good bro there was so much fire in there i can't wait now I can't wait to go back because those those only two or three of those was even on my radar before. One of them or two of them I already knew about, but the solid, super solid list. Oh, I in terms of remember the name of that uh, Tacoma spot. It's called the Quickie Two. I'm tripping. It's called the Quickie yeah, Two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Quickie Two, the all vegan spot. Yep. Yep. 
vegan like soul wow. food smacking hush puppies going crazy oh, okay see now we're talking that sounds fire now martial law van you got the summer series fremont fridays what do people need to know about you guys and what you have coming up well you know i think uh the main the main thing that i've seen um in my you know five six years here in the seattle music scene is that a lot of artists they reach that seattle pinnacle and then they stay here and uh ultimately you know you just get burnt out by the lack of resources uh you know the lack of upward mobility and so for us it's really important that we get out of seattle while still remaining accessible and providing platforms to the people that were just like us so i'd say fremont fridays is something that i hope to be doing into my 50s uh, the Emerald City Gala is something that I hope to be doing into my 50s. And those two things right there uh, want to be my, like, contribution to the regional scene and something that I'll always be able to give other people opportunities through. After that, you know, uh, I'll rock for people. I'll do it if I'm in town, if people got the bread, that type of thing. But for me, it's really getting to places like L.A. and networking, getting to, you know, I've been to London now twice um getting i've been to hawaii multiple times to go out there uh, san francisco we just did a show and got a great following down there uh, portland same thing and then uh getting over to new york and getting in these universities so for us you know i always want to remain true to the seattle scene but i also want to put an emphasis on going to where there are opportunities that are larger uh for myself and, and for others and being able to be, you know, I'm comfortable in any Seattle. You put me on any stage with anybody in any scenario, I'm going to do my thing and I'm ready for it. I want myself to feel stretched. I want myself to feel uncomfortable so that I can grow and then find a new place to feel uncomfortable. So that's what L.A. is for me right now. And that's why I spend about three, four months out the year there outside of, you know, running from the rain a little bit. The gray cloud gets to me. Um, and then, you know, same thing with London and um uh, you know, tap, tapping in with uh, different platforms and different avenues like this right here is a Bloodworks Northwest shirt. So I've been like a spokesperson and an affiliate with them for the past year. And, you know, they've been so great to me and allowed me to, you know, continue to be a full time creative. And so, you know, I'm looking for other brands that uh, align with my, uh, you know, community, positive community outlook and something that like Think Twice, Mobile Breathalyzers, Bloodworks Northwest. Those are things that I get excited about and don't mind doing that's not necessarily music because it aligns with, you know, my overall mission as a human being, which is to leave Absolutely. this place better than, you know, I found it. Trying to leave it a better place than we found it, man. Marshall Hugh, Marshall Law Band, major community impact, a super dope event series. Make sure you guys check it out. Fremont Fridays. For everybody that was here watching, man, we, I really, really, very, really appreciate you guys. This was another episode of uh, RMR TV, the Seattle Spotlight Interview Series. Marshall, thank you for being a guest on the show. To those of you that uh, want to tap in, where can the people find you on social media? Yeah, right here, Marshall Law Band. Uh, I got a personal page, uh, Marshall Hugh 22, and then uh, Fremont Fridays and the Emerald City Gallup page. But yeah, shout out to Holly, shout out to Mira, shout out to uh, Rick Rated, everybody that was in here commenting, making me laugh, distracting me and stuff, correcting my grammar, uh, the hospitalities in here, uh, and uh, Aunt B420, she'd be burning that good stuff and always rocking with the gang. Big shout out to the fam, too. I seen you in here, too, B Core, earlier. We love you guys. We appreciate you. Marshall, I'll see you down the line. Let's definitely stay tapped in. And for those of you in Washington State and Cali, don't sleep on the fire. I'll see okay. you all next week. Love Much you guys. love, bro. Thank you for having me. Have a good night, y'all. Peace. Peace.